Hi, I'm Jen Campbell, and this is Art About, and I'm sitting here today with Alex Weatherup. How are you doing? I'm very well. How are you, Jen? Uh, excellent. Thank excellent. you for having me. So um, he has brought some of his poetry here, and I am so excited about this. I love your poetry. Thank you. So I'm so glad you're here with us today. But I wanted to ask you like one question before we get into your poetry. Sure. And that it's a, a fundamental question. Okay. Um, when did you first consider yourself a poet or an artist? Mm. In uh, sort of the conventional sense, I guess when I was in when I was in college and I switched my major from business finance to English, um, kind of knew that would change uh, you know the course of my life based on you know what I was going to do for work and all that and. Um, it was just really important for me to focus on on English and, and poetry and poetics, and I think once I made that decision, um, that was sort of when I kind of like really, you know, dove into it and kind of felt it. Um, That's awesome. And then, yeah, in the unconventional sense, I honestly I think we're we're all artists. There's art in everyday life constantly. Um, yes. So, you know, we try to do do things well and do them right and do them artistically and you know comes into every aspect of our life. Put your stamp on something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I sure. love that. Yeah. Um, so you have some poetry. I do. Do you want to uh, grace us with a poem? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, so this first one is called William Tell and His Bow. Um, took some of these excerpts from my grandfather's journal uh, when him and my grandma went to uh, Europe in the late 50s. And I just thought, I have a lot of his journals, and, and I always, he was a very well-spoken man, and, you know, I really liked all that stuff, so I took some of it and sort of made it into William Tell and his bow. Got it. William Tell and his bow. Because of the holiday, the Louvre was closed. Mary was impressed with the French pastry that tasted just as good as it looked. Horrible coffee, good chocolate, delicious, thick soups, mm. beautiful clothes with prohibitive prices. We boarded the Albert Express for Switzerland with a bottle of wine and a big bag of pastries. Take me back to Paris. I can't stand the fresh air and healthy people of Switzerland. Arrived in Lucerne with time to enjoy the fountains and all the squares, they were boarded up a couple days later. Delicious cheese fondue, murals painted on the old houses, a quaint town for William Tell with his bow and barefooted boy. A train from the Alps to Venice, train to Florence, Hotel Majestic, whole city is an art gallery. Oh, wow. Michelangelo Square, mosaic jewelry, leather goods, Flores Hotel in Rome, Vatican, Parthenon. St. Paul without the walls, St. Peter in chains, nightclub tour of the city, Old Appian Way, Capuchin Church with all the bones. Oh, I love that. Thank you. I'll go. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Um, when you think of your poetry, um, do you have a studio and how, how does that studio influence your art? Um, I don't necessarily have a studio, per se. It's a very small, comically small writing desk. Um, okay. But, you know, I write most of my poetry either in the morning or late at night. And um, I would say, like, if, if I had a studio, it would be other people's books. Um, oh, I read wow. I read a lot of yeah. other people's poetry. And, um, I mean, Billy Collins said that the trouble with poetry is it encourages the writing of more poetry. And <laughs> um, that's kind of what gets me going, is, like, reading the poets that I love and, like, yeah. and seeing their techniques and everything they're doing and then trying to, you know, take those, uh, make them my own in some sort of way and then, and then write. Um, I love that. So yeah, that kind of comes down to that. So it's like the, you live through the works of other people and that inspires you. Yeah, yeah, it's sort of a, a kill your idols kind of thing. Um, <laughs> you know, I think that, you know, as, as poets we should all like try and read as much poetry from as many different backgrounds of people that we can, um, and then learn all these different fundamentals and techniques and, um, and everything you can about the poetry. So when you come to a poem, you have all the tools necessary to write it. Um, I love that. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you have a, another poem yeah. for us? Okay, yeah. cool. I am so ready. <laughs> ready for my snapping fingers. Um, this is called What I've Learned About Smashing Metal. What I've learned about smashing metal. Your life will bite, <clears throat> excuse me. Your life will be gigantic, built gently with touch. Your material hands building young ideas, pining to grow. Your copper odor skin, as malleable as your talent. You know, I've never really been a hands-on kind of guy, but I do like having my hands on you. And if you put your mind to something, anything, let it be a vessel. And when you smash it, let it become what it wants, not what we want. 
<laughs> I love that. I love Thank that. You. Thank you. So, um, what, tell us tell us a little bit about your process because um, you know you said you write in the morning, you write in the evening. Hmm. Um, are you trying to pull from the day that you had, or um, sometimes on occasion, yeah. Um, mostly, it's just um, you know finding finding a way to you know tell these little miniature stories you know like yeah. where poetry should t say in 12 lines what a novel says in 12 chapters um so i try to focus on like a, an emotion or an image or an idea yeah um and then and then play around with that and then sort of the i mean you can let a poem kind of grow on its own yeah. and um and see where it goes and that's awesome I usually um, end up coming back to them years later. Um, I don't think a poem is ever officially finished, only abandoned. Um, okay. So going back, um, and I also think that we as people, you know, obviously we change over the years. Yeah. Um, so I like to go back and read old poetry of mine and change words and add thoughts. And would you call it reworking it or would you yeah. call it, okay. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think, um, you know, some poetry, you know, some of the, uh, you know, poets, old poetry should, you know, stay the same and, and you know, they exist in, in the past and that's great. And then I do like to update them and, and rewrite them and rework them and yep. try and make them better. That's awesome. Yeah. That's yeah. cool. Do you have another one for us? Sure. Um, this one is called Between Dog and Wolf. Um, it comes from a uh, French saying, entre chien et loup, uh, which, you know, um, is how... It's an expression in French to describe a sunset. Um, okay. So it refers to the moment uh, when the sky darkens and vision becomes unclear and you can't really tell between dog and wolf. Got it. So between dog and wolf. Sundown blues and rain, Plum Island in the rear view, beach mist air for the ride home reddening our eyes and epoxying our skin. With the windows rolled up, I can hear your emphatics more easily. But with the sun finally down, it's harder to follow your lips as you share them. That that I loved. Thank you. That I loved. There's a, a tarot card called the Moon, mm -hmm. and it has uh, an image in the the foreground of a, a wolf and a dog, oh. specifically, and it's tackling the nature of um, a, a person, a human, and that we're we're driven by both of the wild side, the wolf side, mm -hmm. and the dog side which is cultured or, you know, yeah. um, uh, like social, you yeah. know, and that kind of, that poem kind of tickles that to, for me. Yeah, yeah, that's, um, I mean, it's funny you mentioned tarot cards because it is like, they're so, you know, you can interpret them in so many different ways and, and I think that tarot readers, that's almost like they're on the spot to like just basically come up with poems on the spot. You know, yeah. Like, like when they're there, it can read it so many different ways and influence people in so many different ways. That's cool. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um, is there any topics or uh, poetry forms that you're currently working on? Or is it just kind of the, the like you say, the, the thing that happened today? Yeah. Um, I try to, yeah, I try to push, you know, push myself to do that. Um, yeah, yeah. There's, I'm working on a, like a small collection of poems called um, All Them Black Hoods, um, and it sort of deals with this idea of like the call of the void um, and how I think nowadays we are, I think the void is growing bigger. Um, okay, what <laughs> do you mean by the void? The void, so the call of the void, um, this idea that like, um, you know, we, uh, we're attracted to things that like are dangerous to us. Um, okay. Sort of like, you know, you go to the edge of a cliff and you look over it and you're like, there's always that like, and it, you like to jump, um, but you never do. Um, but you're, you're tantalized. Yeah, but that's the call of the void. And I think that's expanding um, a little bit, at least hopefully in my poems. Um, yeah. To include just like the way that, um, that there's, that we're growing as people in America and, um, you know, consumption and, um, Amazon Prime and just everything that we're, everything is, we need more. We constantly need more and this void is growing and it's not getting filled by all this extra things. Right. Um, so, yeah, I'm trying to figure out that, uh, that stopping point of when, when does that, when is that capped? When are we happy with what we have? Because mm. if we didn't have what we would have, we'd be killing for what we have. Um, so, right. you know. And maybe that's, 
the dog and the wolf paradigm. Maybe. Where, which the, the wolf is saying to us, enchanting us mm -hmm. to jump over the cliff, like you're saying, and the dog is, is saying, stay put, be, you know, proper, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, have a nice warm bed at home. Uh, conform, yeah. you know, conform. Yeah. Oh, that's neat. Um, do you have another poem for us? Sure. Um, yeah. This one is called The Ancestral Method. Um, somewhere in a dive, we catch up on lost time, or we waste new, inflating the past. But the vapid between us starts to recarbonate when we wipe oil from our laugh lines and stir head with fingers. I feel uneasiness ease as you put your fingers in my mouth, as your laugh lines widen, as you pulse, as your eyes lift to mine, our paths become a little bit bigger. That is so, there's so much imagery there. And it's almost like the words bubble. You know, there's, there's like a notion of automatopoeia mm -hmm. where, a, you know, a word sounds yeah. as, as it means. Yeah. And there's so much, um, so many words in there that pop and kind of um, give lift to the mm -hmm. poem. Mm -hmm. I love that. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um, so one of the questions that I ask, because this is a show about arts on the North Shore. Yes. And um, I kind of was interested in how uh, place informs your art, like the North Shore. Yeah. Are there parts of the North Shore that inform your art? Um. Yeah, not sort of in like the idea of like that's where I get um, inspiration necessarily, but um, yeah, you know, I've been living on the North Shore for about a year now. Yeah, um, and I feel that there's a wonderful sense of community up here, and there's so many like people helping people, small businesses helping small businesses, and um, I'm from Buffalo, New York. They the tagline is uh, a city of good neighbors, and I really feel that up in Beverly. Um, I didn't feel that when I was living in Boston. Okay, and I think that that. Um, it makes it easier to it makes it easier to write when you're when you're part of this like community of like arts and and all that. Yep. Um, and you know, you can only learn so much uh, about a topic or a subject on your own before you need to ask other people um, mm. for help or, or ideas. Uh, I love that. Or being able to bounce things off each other or doing things like this. Yeah. Um, which you know made me focus on my poetry a lot this past week. You know. Um, That's awesome. Yeah. So um, like that one that I just read, I I wrote that years ago um, and just kind of reworked it and, and played with it a little bit and um, I wouldn't have done that without, without you and without doing this. So um, I think that that's, that's kind of what, what influences uh, me when it comes to the North Shore is like, you know, going to all these book, great bookstores, um, talking to other poets, talking to other writers um, yeah. and getting excited about it and putting it at the forefront of my mind, you know? Right. No. Right. I find that the uh, community around the North Shore is very loving to art, the yeah. arts. Yeah, it really is. And um, there's so many, you know, I'm interested in this show to show the institutions and, and you know, a lot of the, um, the artists that are well known. But I also want to just get that person who is your bartender or your server who mm -hmm. also is in love with art. Yeah, yeah. And you don't know, you know, that they're a great artist, they're a great painter, they're a great, you know. Yeah. Because it's covert. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Speaking of covert, you have a little covert book nook. I, I right? do, I do, yeah. Um, Can you explain it a little bit? Yeah, yeah. So um, I uh, own and operate a small uh, bottle shop um, on Rantoul Street yeah. um, at 112 Rantoul. Uh, it's just called The Bottle Shop. Uh, it's a boutique wine store, liquor store, marketplace. Um, and then I do have like a little covert bookstore called Garden City Books in there, um, which is all used, all poetry. Um, and, and yeah, I just, uh, I figure if I'm going to be there at work um, all day, every day, I want to be surrounded by the things I love. And, and one of those is poetry. Um, right. So, but I want to, you know, not give back to the community, but, you know, make, make poetry accessible to other people. And like the things that I love, like I want people to be able to read them. Um, so, yes. So when you go into the bookstore, I want to give people a little visual because yeah. it's very covert. It is, yeah. So when you walk into the bookstore, I mean, sorry, the um, bottle shop, Bottle shop. Mm -hmm. when you walk into the bottle shop, you have to kind of walk down a little ways mm -hmm. and then it's it's kind of to your right. Yep. 
so yeah, if you were to go in the into the shop and and walk left down in the corner uh, near the beer coolers and that, um, you turn right. There's a beautiful wall of uh, it's a wine rack, um, and I knocked some of the some of the shelves out and uh, made I love just that. made just yeah one long one long shelf of poetry. Um, uh, yeah, so it's 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 not a ton, but it, it is very small, but um, makes me even happy. So. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. Um, do you? Um, have a motto or a creed that you go by when you're thinking about art and producing art? Yeah. Um, um, avoid the passive. Um, avoid the passive. Avoid the passive. You know, okay. to be very, very like. I mean, when it comes to your like your characters, your subject material, um, and stuff like that, uh, you want to be as um, invested in it as much as possible. Um, and then when it comes to like. I'm a big advocate of like, uh, you know, lie, cheat, steal, kill. Um, so when you're so you're creating art, but you're kind of stealing it from your favorite poets. Yes, yes, yeah. Go it, for it. It kind of yeah. goes back to that sort of kill your idols thing. Like I, I really like um, you know learning as much as you can from from these great writers, and especially too like a, a lot of the writers that I read now are are younger than I am. So um, who are you stealing from? <laughs> Um, you know, um, stealing, insp not, not necessarily stealing inspiration, but, you know, I being, like stealing. being, Go for it. yeah, I mean, originality is <laughs> hiding your sources. Um, yeah, yeah. but, um, you know, Kava Akbar, um, Bianca Stone, and then, I mean, I've, I, I love Charles Simic, um, but, you know, some of these younger writers, um, they're just wildly inspiring, um, and, I like to to read them, you know, be inspired by them, um, try and emulate them in in some way, and mm. then uh, and then make it my own, um, and then sort of, you know, drop that and then and use that as a as a you know a base, and then build on it. Um, How do you make it your own? Oh, um, you know, take my life, my ideas, my convictions, and sort of put them in the po in the poetry and. Um, you know, past experiences that I've had that I, you know, can't really exactly articulate right away, but I need some sort of, some sort of structure and form to start with, and then I fill in, sort of fill in the blanks, I guess. Fill in the blanks. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. That's cool. Um, thinking about your, yourself and, say, a younger artist, do you have, do you have advice for a younger artist? Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I would have to say it's a, a younger poet, a younger artist, I would say, you know, consume, you know, uh, take everything you can and learn um, right. and learn. And, and like 80 percent of it is reading and 20 percent of it is writing. And then there's a Another portion of it that's experience, that's living life, you know, and like going out and making bad decisions and making fun decisions and then, you know, having stories and having all that and then taking the time to really sit down and, and, and work on your, on your craft. Right. Um, so it is, um, what I think is really cool about poetry, specifically poetry when it comes to, to art is there's, there's no way to get rich writing poetry. There's, oh, come on. No, there's no way. I'm trying. <laughs> there's no way. There's <laughs> even the most famous poets or, you know, whatever. They're, you know. Yeah. They're also teachers. There's also, there's, there's no way to become rich in poetry. We do this um, because we love it. And, we do. and, you know, it's, it, you have to. Yeah. Um, you know, you can, you can, you know, potentially become rich and famous from even writing fiction or, you know, being a cinematographer, photographer, not with poetry. Okay. This is, this is it. Yeah. Um, and I think that's, I think that's great. Um, you know, it, it really takes a lot of commitment to continue doing that over your life. And, and you're only going to do it if it's something that you really, really love. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, have there been times in your life where you've kind of stepped away from poetry and you, you, you know, you're saying this is too hard or. Yeah, not, not cause it was too hard. I've always enjoyed it. I also, I, I think it's, um, it's a lot of fun for me too. Um, oh, so, good. you know, it's not, it's not a. I mean, it's challenging and it's fun, but um, I think the, there's been times when I stepped away when, you know, um, I'm working a lot or, you know, I was, a, I was a bartender for a very long time, so it was like going out drinking a lot and partying a lot, and, you know, you don't really write as much when you're hungover. That's true. Um, but, uh, so yeah, so that, and then, um, 
honestly, when uh, when COVID hit and we were all trapped in our homes, started writing again, um, started creating, and then it's, so COVID was good for you. COVID was, uh, yeah, it was okay for me. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it was. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it's you know, in the past when when I've just I've just been working too much or you know out partying and that. Um, but I always do come back to it, and um, you, you always know. come back. Yeah, always it's like come a back. siren song or yeah, something. Yeah, it is. yeah, yeah. It like it seduces you. It does. Yeah. Every time. Yeah. Have you ever gotten involved in groups with other poets and worked with other poets? Um, yeah, not not since college so much, which um, is is kind of a bummer. Um, but I did um, when I was out in I went to UNLV in Las Vegas. Um, and there was, a, I mean, I had wonderful teachers and really great, um, you know, peers. Uh, so I did a lot back then, and even the few years after school. But um, as of lately, not so much. Um, but yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to. And uh, yeah. yeah, I think there is. There's a lot of opportunity to do that on the North Shore, and I'm really excited about that. Right. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. The uh, Do you have any other poems for us? Yeah. Sure. Um, yeah. Let's see. How about this one? Okay. This one is called, Yoga Starts Early Tomorrow, You Should Set an Alarm So You Don't Miss It. I love that. Yoga starts early tomorrow, you should set an alarm so you don't miss it. As we lay back, I think, if stretching by yourself feels so good, it's almost sexual, it must feel wild being pressed down and stretched back by a warm body swarming over you. So I bring your legs to 11.05, press down, hold, like I'm setting an alarm clock, I lock in the time at 10.10. Now you exhale. Ah, oh, that's great. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so, as you probably know, uh, every show I try to cap it with a poem yeah. that I wrote during the show. Um, I, was, I try to be a little covert about it. Yeah. And um, this is your poem. And oh. um, I date it and I sign it. And I'm, I'll give it to you. You can treasure it. Fantastic. Or you could throw it away, whatever Probably you want to do. Probably treasure it. Treasure it. There, there you go. go. So it's, it's, uh, it's titled Living in Books. Hiding in a bottle shop, impassioned by projects, tripping over our pieces of you. I am lifted by your art. Not running like water, but on the edges of Beverly. We are in its eye. I love that. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's your poem. Thank you. For Art About. I love that. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. Thank you, Alex Weatherup, for coming. Thank you, Jen. To um, Art About. Thank you. This was outstanding. Thank I'm, you. I'm very honored that you, you know, put your faith and in, in time into me. It's, it's really your, nice. Your poetry is beautiful. Thank you. Thank yeah. You. Um, I'm Jen Campbell, this is Art About, and we are all about arts on the North Shore.